The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Good morning. Welcome to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ, 750 AM. You can also get us on YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago, YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago. I'm Father Greg Sackowitz, the rector of Holy Name Cathedral in Chicago, and co-host Mark Teresi, who is the director of our 175th through the chair and 150th anniversary, plus working with Legacy and many other areas in the cathedral. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Good morning. Our 175th begins in November with a special Mass. Uh, we had a planning leadership meeting over the weekend, which was tremendous. People, we have a lot of great people volunteering, and we'll make sure everybody in the Archdiocese knows what's going on for Holy Name beginning in November through the next November. And it's amazing how we are into the third week of the Lenten season. And folks, if you have a chance, go to Mass, go to Confession. We're going to blink. It'll be Holy Week. And I always say Lent, the word means springtime and time conversion, change of heart, new beginnings, and the Lord does run after us. This day that we are taping, which is March 4th, Monday, is spectacular weather. It's supposed to be 70 degrees in Chicago. I think the playback is Thursday, which would be March 7th, which would then be, would be today for this program. So we have a great program lined up. So could I add one thing? Sure. Usually I don't do this, but um, my sister Rachel's 60th birthday is uh, next Sunday, so I just want to wish her a uh, happy, happy birthday. She's a great, <clears throat> great sister. 60th. She's young. Well, <laughs> younger wow. than me, a lot younger. <laughs> Along those lines, tranquility, transformation, and transcendence is what Mary Kay Doyle insists you will find when strolling through the 72 poems and photos inspired by the natural treasures found in three Chicago suburban public gardens, Cantini Park in Wheaton, the Morton Arboretum in Lyle, Chicago Botanic Garden in Glencoe. Join us in the next 30 minutes, Mary Kay Doyle. Mary, good morning, welcome to the program. Good morning, Father, good morning, Mark. Good morning, welcome. Now, a little bit of Thanks. your background. Where are you from, Mary, growing up? I grew up in Chicago. Okay, what, I, uh, what high school? Yes, I was at Our Lady of the Angels. Oh, um, oh for grammar yes. school. Pardon me? Grammar school was Our Lady of the Angels. Grammar school was Our Lady of the Angels, and then we moved to Oak Park. So then I lived in Oak Park for a while. And, um, yeah, and then moved to Elmwood Park, and then we've moved around since. <laughs> well, just the very sense of the, the book was 72 poems with Cantini Park and Morton Arboretum and Chicago Botanic Garden. I get the impression you love nature and you still how connect the mystery of God with our lives, through nature. Have you had a profound love for nature since you were a little girl? Yes, absolutely. I find nature to be very healing. And when I wrote this book, I had um, just gone through 15 years with my husband's Alzheimer's disease. Wow. He passed away in 2019. I needed healing and we were going into COVID I felt the room oh, needed wow. healing. Wow. So where could I find that in nature? Nature gives it. God provides everything we need. And he, those quiet places, the greenery, the flowers, so healing. What a unique idea. What made you, first of all, pursue the idea, but secondly, choose those three sp places that you chose? Cantini's very close <clears throat> to where I live. So I would pop in and out of there uh, periodically and um, go for walks in the morning and take photos and I'd see a hawk or a hmm. new tree blooming. And it made me so happy. I wanted to share that. I wanted that to be my gift to people who were also going through healing times who needed that. That's interesting because ever since I was a little boy, I've had a profound love for nature. and. I've been bird watching since I was 10 years old. So my whole life was playing football, basketball, softball, baseball. But my mother always loved when I went bird watching because I came back in one piece. No stitches, no <laughs> broken bones. And so it, I always found, just like you were saying, Mary, 
you walk into nature and it gives you a chance for all your stress to melt. And if we just take the time to be aware of nature and the presence of God around us with the flowers, with the trees, with the birds, with the deer, with the animals, it's really a profound moment. We're always in such a rush. And so, as you mentioned, your husband, 15 years with Alzheimer's, then he died in 2019, just as we were hitting with COVID, which happened to be about two years ago, no, no, four years ago at this time, yeah. mid-March 2020, it's been four years. And so, but what, with his sickness and then dying, what drew you to nature as a way to grieve, as a way to reconnect, as a way to recharge. It could have been so many different ways, but how ended up, how come was it ended up being nature? And nature just draws me. And the three parks are very different. Cantini is smaller side. So you could walk through that in a short period of time. I could run in and out of there. Morton Arboretum, of course, is so green and the trees. And so it's a different feeling. And Chicago Botanic Gardens is spectacular. Uh, we're so fortunate to have this mm -hmm. really spectacular garden so close to us, you know, within an hour's drive. It's a little further for me, but still well worth it. It's like going on vacation, you know, a waterfall and Japanese garden rose garden there's different uh, types the lilies so different types of gardens you can go and find your spot wherever that may be the bonsai trees you know whatever um draws you closer now mary as you w were living with your husband and dealing with the alzheimer's for 15 and a half years where did you find your respite during those 15 years was this where you went or uh, because the book sounds like the book is a culmination of what you lived through but how did you do it day by day I'm sure our listeners would want to know many of them living through what you what you lived through it's extremely challenging and I think one part of it that people don't realize is how lonely it is mm -hmm. it's um, lonely because like my husband and I didn't have a real conversation probably for the last 10 years. Wow. Wow. So it's very repetitive. What are we eating? Chicken. Is this beef? No, it's chicken. Are we eating turkey? Something like that. It's chicken. You know, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you have to constantly answer the same question. So it's not a, uh, an engaging conversation and yet there's so much round the clock responsibility uh, Marshall never slept he didn't sleep at night so I didn't sleep he was up he was wandering I had a hard time keeping him in he, he had naturally worked during the years when he was younger in the evening so the evening for him was the time to come alive mm -hmm. and so Fortunately, I never got to recover from uh, the day's work that had to be done because I would be up all night too. And he was very a very public person. I mean, yeah. he, he was a performer, an entertainer. Yes, a he magician. was a magician. I grew up with mm -hmm. him. He was on Bozo, right? He had a, yes. he had a gig on Bozo, Marshall Brodeen. <laughs> oh, yeah. absolutely. So he sure, brought a sure. lot, I mean, in the time as a performer, he brought a lot of joy. You should, I think you should hold on to that too. He brought a lot of joy to a lot of us Mary, as what we years, were growing up. What years was Marshall on the Bozo Show? He was on the Bozo Show about 26 years. Yeah. 1960-ish. Wow. Was he Wizzo? Was Wizzo his? Yes. Yeah, Wizzo. Wizzo. Oh, sure. Wizzo. With Bozo. And actually, he started off as himself doing magic. Mm -hmm. and he and Cookie the Clown. Yes. Roy Brown, Wizzo, developed. Cookie, Bozo. And I even remember, if this is accurate, didn't I think we bought, like he sold a little magic something yes. that we bought. Magic we insisted sense. with my parents that we have to get this magic. Thing. 
<laughs> with Wizzle. Yeah. That's amazing. Imagine. That's, so which means you're talking, Marshall, such an incredibly public person, performer, brought joy to thousands of children oh, and yeah. people. And then I, you were struggling with the word lonely. Yeah. That here you were yes. with Marshall in the home. And I've talked to so many couples where it's just the two of them growing up in, in their later years. But they feel a peace because at least the other's in the house exactly. for a conversation. You can be in one room, he's in the other room, and everything's fine. When you're dealing with Alzheimer's, it's the loneliness because there is no dialogue, there is no conversation. All the repetitive thing is just you just mentioned, and we sometimes forget that, especially when his former life, earlier years, no. WGN, Bozo Show, very public, public. Yeah. Very, very, very public. public. And also that change within you, but all of a sudden, then Marshall goes home to God in 2019. We're hit then with COVID. And remember, during the COVID time, especially the first year, we were truly isolated. I couldn't even take no. a walk down by Lake Michigan. Exactly. You couldn't walk along the lake. They had the uh, horses out. It was all blocked. Stay home. I would sneak into a park and you know, do try to do a little bird watching, and everything was locked. And so. So this, really for you, Mary, this book was a way to regain strength, um, I don't want to say your sanity, but somehow reconnecting with God. Yeah. Yes, it, it fed me. Yeah, yes, I, it, it I felt you. the presence of the Lord outside in nature. I mean, everything is alive and, you know, he told us he'll take care of the birds so of course he'll take care of us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my one of my favorites is the hummingbirds i have a lot of hummingbird fever, feeders in my yard and to see them and they come so close if they'll trust you mm -hmm. if you're gentle and you're quiet with them so those were my companions my pets you know during that time and um yes and going outside through these parks when i could when they were open and we would have to sign up to get in. Mm -hmm. So they would space us out, you know, a little bit trickier, but it was nice. And actually for most of the time I had Marshall at home, uh, we walked every day Oh, because that also was something for the two of us. You know, we had nothing to talk about, but you could see the little squirrels running. Mm -hmm. The leaves were rustling, the colors were changing, and so it gave us something to talk about, even if it was repetitive. To Marshall, it was all new yeah. every time. Every day. Every day. It was wow. new and exciting, so, um, and it actually was a wonderful thing for us. Kept us physically active and um, gave us something to talk about. Yes. Uh, well. Mary, th this sharing, I think, is so important. Not only the book, but just the idea of how people live through Alzheimer's. Because um, my wife's mom went through that for seven and a half years, and I saw the toll it took on my wife. And you've got to find ways, ways to touch God in those moments and, that he's, and know that he's always caring for you. WNDZ 750 and we're going to take a little break Catholic Chicago you can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago with Mary Kay Doyle when we come back I'm going to ask you Mary are you a plant lady my uh, wife yeah. my yes. wife is a <laughs> plant lady and she and it surrounds the house with beauty you know she brings the beauty in so when we get back we'll talk about that please stay tuned say how can you spend your day with three-year-olds seeing the changes that they go through and just the journey and how they grow this is a very rewarding job 
Even though at the end of the day, we're not the highest paid people on earth. And when I have a parent contact me and say, my child loves school, that to me, I'm setting that foundation for their love of learning. Because really you are changing lives, you are molding lives. Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Did you know that Catholic Charities accepts car donations? If you're ready to free up space in your garage and put a stop to all those expenses that go along with owning a car, we will gratefully accept your donation, whether the car is running or not. You choose a pickup time that is convenient for you, and we will make the donation as easy as possible free of charge. You'll receive a charitable donation receipt as well. We accept all types of vehicles nationwide, and you will know that your donation is made to Catholic Charities, an agency you can trust. To learn more about donating your car, call 877-786-4483. That's 877-786-4483. Thank you. We're back at WNDZ, 7.50 a.m., Catholic Chicago. You can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Father Greg Sackowitz here, Mark Teresi, and we're with Mary Kay Doyle, and we're talking about Tranquility, Transformation, Transcendence. Beautiful, a beautiful book on, um, on Holy peace. nature. Peace, uh, on nature, how nature brings peace to your soul. And uh, before the break, I had asked... Mary Kay, if you're like my wife, a plant lady, our house is filled with plants. She tends to them. It really makes a difference in terms of just sitting and enjoying. Are you a plant lady in, in the house? I am. I have plants wherever the windows are that mm. bring in the light. I, I'm in a townhouse, so I don't have um, side windows, but front and back. Mm -hmm. And um, last summer, I brought in Mondavia plants, which are tropical and they're beautiful and they actually were blooming in my office i just brought them back downstairs because mm -hmm. i thought they needed more space than i had here but um yeah yep. i have that and now were, the, were the plants you have going back years or was this like in the last five seven ten years always had oh, plants. oh okay so always. you always touched nature yes always have had plants now if we talk about the book for a second you're talking about tranquility, transformation, transcendence, is what this book is all about. But it's 72 poems, and how did, what, okay, and I know that with uh, Marshall's Alzheimer's and the ordeal, you went through that, but you were with him until the end, and then the different parks to go to. But what inspired you then from all that to now sit and write a book? 72 poems. I travel with my camera, I'm always taking photos. And the fun part about photography is sometimes you go out and you look at something and you wanna take a photo, but the photo that you get back is not really what you were focusing on. There's mm -hmm. something else happening in that photo that you look at and those pictures spoke to me. So sometimes I would look at something and I, hear the poem in my head and then other times I'd see the photo come back and um, I'd say oh my goodness look at this photo this is what it says to me Beautiful. and try to express that through words because really I'm a, a writer since the time I was a child too so um, before I would go to school when I was in, uh, going to Our Lady of the Angels back as a child I would tell my mother a little poem. So I was writing oh, poetry. Beautiful. Way back then, I would make something up and give her a poem for the day. Now, the thing is, in your, in your book of poetry there, would you have a poem you want to share with your listeners, with our listeners right now, a short poem? Sure. Um, I don't know, would you prefer one about steward of all living things or natural beauty? 
How about uh, natural, natural beauty? Because then we'll think of Father Greg. <laughs> okay. Natural beauty. Beauty doesn't have to be expensive. Glance out the window. Walk through a public garden. Look at clouds, greenery, wildlife. Nature offers us the most fragrant, aesthetically pleasing, and texturally interesting sights we can possibly hope to see. Truly tranquil, truly transformative, truly transcendent. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, you know what, Mary, Beautiful. as you read that poem, your face lit was up. lit up. It just lit up. It was a part of you, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I had two questions. Mark. One, now I'm thinking of our garden ministry. We have people at Holy Name that do a garden ministry. It's a wonderful ministry. I'm sure they're connecting the way you connect in some yeah. way. There's a yeah. dimension to it. How do people get this book? Because that would be a great book for us to give to our garden ministry people. How do we find it? ACTA Publications is the publisher. So you could get it from ACTA and they're online at actapublications.com. Uh, the book is also on Amazon. Um, yeah, so I think you, probably the publisher is the easiest way to get it or Amazon, which people are used to. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you know, I think too what I found is it's a really good book to bring as a house gift, yeah. when you walk in a hostess gift, mm -hmm. um, also people who aren't feeling well. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that tell me it's a good book to open, look at a photo, maybe read one poem, put it down, come back, read it later. I know my uncle tells me he keeps it on his end table and um, he doesn't get around that well anymore he's um, going to be 90 next year and he says it just gives him peace you know it's a peaceful book to read and pick up from time to time and, and i would suggest for folks you know i was confined by illness some years ago and to to be home the walls don't close in if you have a book like that and you can open it up and it brings you into nature it brings you into another dimension. So you're not always focusing in on what, where you're sitting there. The other question I had was is just curiosity because my wife would ask it if she were here. How did you and Marshall meet? I was writing for the Chicago Tribune and I actually had written a story on another magician oh. who had a haunted house. <laughs> and he gave me Marshall's name as a reference. Wow. So uh, Terry Evans would, is his name. And then a year later, I went back to the Chicago Tribune and I asked, I said, why haven't we ever written a feature article on Marshall? I mean, he's a big Chicago icon. Mm -hmm. And so then I went out and interviewed him. And um, it was it was funny, actually. I, we used to talk about it because he was so nervous with me that he was fiddling with the blinds <laughs> items on his desk <laughs> and then he came around and sat next to me and i was like oh no uh i think it's time to leave <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me out and i said oh that would be so unethical because you know i have to stay partial as i write this article mm -hmm. uh -huh. and marshall was very persistent he would call and he'd say I forgot to tell you this story. <laughs> I have photos for you. I uh, and I'd say mail them. And say, oh, mail no, them. No, no. I can't mail them. Can you meet me for coffee? So, Beautiful. Well, he was, he was he was persistent. Now someone could say how you were meeting Marshall. Oh, what a coincidence! And I say this all the time: a coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. And now yeah. the title. Give us the title of the book, Mary. The title of this book is Tranquility, Transformation, Transcendence. And by Mary K. Doyle, ACTA, ACTA, yes. ACTA Publications. 
You said activepublications.com? Acta, A-C-T-A, mm -hmm. publications.com. Dot yes. com. One other question. It, uh, people, you had a beautiful creative idea and act as publishing Greg Pierce, who you know oh, very, sure, well. very well. Oh, sure, very well. Great man. How, how do you get a he book a published? Good man. How do you get a book published like that? I mean, if people have some wonderful ideas like you had, you know, it can only go so far until you get a publisher. How did, how did that I, happen? I met Greg at a book show, at a, um, a Catholic at a book show that, that used to be in Pheasant Run, which isn't even there anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, St. Charles. Mm -hmm. he, picked, he picked up my first book that I was selling on my own. It was The Rosary Prayer by Prayer. Oh. And since then, I've published about nine books with Greg. Beautiful. And three of them are on caregiving, and they have to do with um, caregiving for someone with Alzheimer's because that's my experience. But uh, we all are caregivers, mm -hmm. caregivers of the earth, caregivers of our neighbors, children, the elderly, you know, our ministry with maybe talking to people as we work in a grocery store mm -hmm. or a laundromat. And, you know, we connect and try to take care of each other for the most part. Mary, what's the name of the book on Alzheimer's that you wrote some years ago, which is through Active Publications? Because, of course, we do have listeners mm -hmm. who have a spouse with Alzheimer's, a neighbor, a cousin, a dear friend. What's the name of that book? Navigating Alzheimer's. And the other one is The Alzheimer's Sp Spouse, and they are also available through ACTA, so A-C-T-A. The, the two titles again, the two titles, Navigating Alzheimer's. And Navigating one, Alzheimer's, yes. And the other book? And the other one is The Alzheimer's Spouse. Again, by Mary Kay Doyle, ACTA Publications, mm -hmm. A-C-T-A Publications.com. Also, you can get them both on Amazon. Because, so you're really touching a chord. What I find is, and just think about this for a moment. When Marshall died in 2019, and he took to writing his book on the poems on nature, I've, I know too many people who come up with what's called destructive ways of dealing with grief. Mm -hmm. Drinking, drugs, gaining a lot of weight, anger. And there's a great line that says, things we take in bitterly, to, you know, Things we take in quietly come out in noisy ways. Yeah. Yeah. Things we take in quietly come out in noisy ways. But you chose a very healthy outlet, nature, and then expressing it through writing and to share with all of our listeners here in the wider community. And we need to bring this segment to program to a close. I want to thank you in a very special Beautiful. way. Mary Kay Doyle, the, her latest book, Tranquility, Transformation, and Transcendence, by Mary Kay Doyle, 72 poems connecting the mystery of God with our lives through nature. Mary Kay, you are a tremendous gift to all of us. Yes. We want to thank you for being a part of the program this morning. Our prayers are with you. Keep writing and yes. keep enjoying the gift of nature because spring is upon us. Father Greg Sackowitz along with Mark Teresi here on Catholic Chicago, WNDZ, 750 AM. Also get us on youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Stay with us. We'll be back in a few minutes. And again, do not touch that dial.